Hello world! In today's video, we'll see how we can interface a DC motor with our MSP430 microcontroller. So first things first, you cannot connect the DC motor directly to any of the port pins of a microcontroller because they cannot provide high current values which are required for the operation of a motor. So a motor driver is added which acts like an interface between these two guys, that is your motor and your microcontroller. So this is basically nothing but a chip that is added, an IC. So microcontroller provides a low current signal from its port pin to the driver IC and the driver in turn provides the high current output to the motor. And we'll be using L293D motor driver for our project. It is a dual H bridge IC and you can drive two motors simultaneously using L293D chip. We'll be driving only one motor for our project. So now let's have a quick look at the pinout of the L293D. So it has got VCC1 which provides the voltage for the chip itself and that is pin number 16 and it should be connected to 5 volts. Then the voltage required for motors is provided on VCC2 which is pin number 8 and it is connected to 9 volts. Then enable pin is connected to 3.3 volt. And this pin is present on both the sides of the IC that is right and left as you can see it's pin number 1 and pin number 9. And it simply enables the input pins on either side. And since we'll be using one motor on the left hand side, uh, we'll be connecting enable 1 to 3.3 volts. Then the input 1 and input 2 signals are provided by the microcontroller and they control the output 1 and output 2 pins which are connected to each end of the motor. Now depending on the value of the input 1 and input 2, one may get 4 results out of which obviously 2 are of importance, anti-clockwise and clockwise direction, so we'll be using either of these two options. Now let's see the hardware connection and a demo of how this works. So as you can see here we have connected L293D to both the microcontroller and the DC motor and the motor is moving in anti-clockwise direction. Now one may wonder that isn't this an overkill like we are using a microcontroller to simply run the motor continuously. We might as well connect the battery directly to the motor and perhaps put a switch in between that could just uh, turn the operation on and off. So the important thing about the microcontroller is that it offers two important peripherals. One is ADC and the other is timer. I have made videos on both these peripherals, so uh, do check those on my channel. So we'll be using the timer peripheral to control the speed of the motor. And uh, thus, it's not simply turning on and off um, the motor in a particular speed setting, but we can change the speed using the microcontroller. So that's the advantage. We'll be using PWM signal to drive the input pins of the driver. Thus, our microcontroller helps in achieving a more deterministic output. Now, let's take a quick look at the software flowchart and uh, understand the modifications which are required to control the speed of the motor. So first of all, we start, as usual, we stop the watchdog timer, we don't need it. We configure the port pins for DC motors, that is to drive input signals 1 and 2 of the driver. And one of them will provide PWM signal and the other will be kept at logic low or zero. So we can have either clockwise or anti-clockwise rotation of our motor. Now for controlling the speed, we will be using a button on port 1 bit 3. And this button will act like a knob. So the knob that you have on your mixer grinder, let's say that, which allows you to switch between speeds. So that is how uh, we're going to use the button, like a knob. Then we configure the timer specific registers, CCR0 and CCTL1. And we'll be using out mode 7 for PWM signal. Again, if you don't know anything about PWM, then do check the video that I have made on that mode as well. Then we enable the interrupts and enter the low power mode. Now, whenever the button is pressed, the port 1 ISR is invoked. Here we check if the button was pressed for the first time. If it was, then we set CCR1 for 85% duty cycle. And this is our high speed setting. 
And if it is the second button press, in that case, the CCR is set for 25% duty cycle and the motor will run extremely slowly and it's almost like it's off. Thus, you can include as many speed settings as you want by extending this logic further. Then we reset the state of the button um, so that the next button press will start from one again. Now, when two contacts of the switch hit together, they tend to bounce off of each other a few times before settling down. Thus, we do something called as button debounce check. And without that, without button debounce check, pressing the button can result in unpredictable results, which we want to avoid. Thus, we do this. Then we simply reset the interrupt flag and we are ready for the next button press. Now let's see this thing in action. Now as you can see, I have used two batteries for this project. One provides both 3.3 volts and 5 volts via the power supply module and another is connected to the L293D IC for our motor. And this project can help you in building more complex applications, perhaps involving two motors and more components. And you can also try line follower. It all depends on what you're trying to achieve, basically. So as you can see that the speed is changing from high to low and low to high. And I was enjoying this thing a little too much. So I played with it for a couple of times. And yeah, that's the execution. The code for this project as well as the circuit diagram will be there on my blog. I always put that on my blog. So the link will be in the description below. So do check that out if you want to access it. And yeah, that's it for today's project. Now the next video, I'm thinking that I should be making it on the realistic way to approach an embedded systems related project or a problem. So I was thinking that because this whole thing, the way I'm portraying it, it appears like it's so simple, right? You have the circuit diagram, you have the software running on top of it, and you have all the concepts presented in a certain way. So you may think that, oh, this is so simple. But ideally, when you start off with a project, it can be very, very complicated. Even to light up a single LED is not an easy task. So if you are dealing with just software to print Hello World is not that uh, difficult but if you're dealing with embedded systems then in that case even blinking an LED <laughs> takes a lot of effort for an absolute beginner. So if you are an absolute beginner and if you want to understand how you should be going about executing this type of project and I'll be considering the same example that is interfacing the DC motor with MSP430 microcontroller. So I'll be taking the same example and I'll be breaking it down into small steps as to how I approached the whole thing and what are the challenges that I faced. Now, obviously this is a very simple example and it's not an industry level example or something like that, but it is a stepping stone for doing something which requires more expertise. So it'll give you a certain idea of how to approach the uh, embedded systems related problem. So yeah, that'll be the next video. Now coming to the point of subscribing to the channel. So please subscribe if you haven't already, first of all that. And I've seen that uh, the blog has reached like a good number of people and it has helped uh, them obviously. And I have got like good amount of views in recent times, which is great. But I want it to reach more number of people because it is obviously helping some of you. So it'll always help a uh, more number of people. So yeah, if you have friends, if you have colleagues or if you have uh, peers, who are studying with you or who are working with you. And if you have found the, these videos helpful, then please spread the word and ask them to subscribe to the channel as well because I need more subscribers now. And um, yeah, this is it. Like the video if you found it helpful. Subscribe again. Comment if you have more ideas, project ideas and stuff like that, which you would like to see um, on this particular channel. And uh, yeah, that is it. I'll see you next time. Bye world.